Coming up, new phase as more states across the country lift indoor mask guidelines. Dr. John will be here to answer your latest questions about the coronavirus. When will COVID-19 end and how will we know? Then Ukraine explain just where is this country and why is this nation in the news headlines lately? What you need to know. Plus, monkeying around. This little girl is the latest addition to a New Jersey zoo. We're there with details. And inspiring kids. This boy from Memphis put a new spin on the ABCs. You can be a kid, kindergarten teacher. Those kids are young and restless. And now his message has inspired others. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's great to be with you guys. We've got a super lineup ahead, including our kid correspondent, Lucy, goes one-on-one -on -one with a woman behind some of the most popular kid shows, like Doc McStuffins and Ada Twist Scientists. Find out just what it takes to make these characters come to life. Plus, this seven-year-old came up with a pretty fun way to tell kids about some careers during the pandemic. You can be an anchor, like your buddy, Mr. Lester Holt. We first caught up with Sam White back in 2020. A lot has happened since then. He and his dad will join us with an update in just a few moments. But first, we begin overseas with a look at a country that's been in the news a lot lately. Ukraine is located in Europe, and the United States is keeping a close eye on what's unfolding there as tensions rise between Ukraine and its neighbor to the east, Russia. It's a question that's been on your mind. Why is Russia going to invade Ukraine? To help you understand what's going on in Ukraine, you have to first understand a little bit about the country's history. Ukraine is a country located in Eastern Europe. Bordered by seven countries, it is slightly smaller than the state of Texas. Ukraine has a long and complicated history with its neighbor to the east, Russia. To help explain, we asked our pal Michael Beschloss, NBC News presidential historian. Ukraine used to be part of the country that we now know as Russia. It split off about 30 years ago. Russia used to be part of something called the Soviet Union, which for about half a century was one of the most powerful countries in the world, and Ukraine was a part of that country. But in 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed and Ukraine gained full independence. The leader of Russia, Vladimir Putin, has always been uncomfortable with the fact that Ukraine split off from Russia. He worries that it's hostile to him. He would like to create a grand Russia that's very powerful, of which Ukraine is a part. Putin says Ukraine is an important part of Russia's history, but many Ukrainians do not want to be a part of Russia again and prefer to remain an independent nation. The United States agrees, and so do other allied countries. This aggression uh, from, from Russia against Ukraine is a direct challenge to the basic principles that have undergirded our security and our peace uh, for, uh, for decades. The notion that one country doesn't simply go in and change the borders of another by force. To safeguard against such threats, the U.S. is one of 30 countries that are a part of NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, an alliance established to ensure the freedom and security of member nations. The bottom line is this. The United States and our allies and partners will support the Ukrainian people. President Biden and other world leaders have urged Russian President Putin to try to resolve differences Russia sees with Ukraine peacefully without going to war. One of the things we always try to do is keep the world out of war if we possibly can. That's what President Biden is doing now. We Americans obey certain moral values, and one of them is when we see a strong country trying to take over a weak country by force, we try to prevent that from happening. If Ukraine were invaded and if the Russians tried to conquer Ukraine, our attitude would be a big country should not oppress a smaller country next door. We Americans should try to do something about that. This week, President Biden said Russia is beginning an invasion of Ukraine. 
depending on what happens next, an invasion, experts warn, could cause gas and home heating bills to go up even more here in the United States. Why? Russia is one of the world's largest exporters of oil and gas, so the potential of war could reduce the global supply. Okay, I want to turn now to another story in the news this week, and that's the coronavirus. As new cases decline, more cities and states are rolling back mask mandates. But one of the nation's top doctors, Dr. Anthony Fauci, is warning against prematurely ending some of those safety measures. We know you guys have a lot of questions about what's going on, so let's get straight to them. Joining us now in our Ask the Doc segment is our pal, Dr. John Torres. And, John, I know some states are lifting mask mandates for indoor public spaces, including some schools. Here's a question that comes all the way from India. Hi, my name is Ali, and I, and I live in India. Why do kids need the COVID vaccine? I love Matt Little's kids tradition. Ali, thanks. And, and Doc, what's your answer? And also, what should kids know as we head into what appears to be this new phase of this pandemic? You know, I think the main thing kids should know is we're not quite there yet, so we still need to protect ourselves, and that means doing everything we can, including getting the vaccine. Now, we have what we call a toolbox of things we can use to try and prevent us from getting coronavirus, getting COVID, and getting sick from COVID. But those things include the things we've been using for a long time, masks for everybody when you need them, social distancing, making sure that we clean our hands appropriately. But one of the bigger things in that toolbox is the vaccine, and right now, here in the United States, kids five and above can get the vaccine. And we think within a couple of months, kids six months old to four will also be able to get it. It's important because that's the main thing that's going to prevent them from either getting COVID or if they do get COVID, from getting sick from COVID. That's what vaccines do. And we're hoping that soon almost everybody can get it. Okay, let's get to our next questions. They come from two siblings. Hello, my name is Len. I'm seven years old. My name is Len. I'm five years old. We're both on your back. We have two questions today. The first question is, how big is the coronavirus? The second question is, how powerful of a microscope do you need to have to see the coronavirus? Bye! We love my news kids edition. Yeah, Dr. John, I assume we can't see it with the naked eye. You know, the coronavirus is a virus, which means it is so small, we can't see it with the naked eye. A lot of times I use models like this just so we can see what's going on with the virus. But the coronavirus is actually about 120 nanometers. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. So if you get three feet and you cut it up into a billion slices, 120 of those are going to be coronavirus. And to put it in perspective, when we look at models, let's say this is a bacteria. A bacteria is a big germ that causes strep throat or ear infections. If you look inside here, there are sprinkles here. And one of those little sprinkles is going to be about the size of the virus comparatively, which means that's how small it is compared to the big bacteria. So when it comes to coronavirus, the one thing we know is about a million of them can fill something the size of a tennis ball. So with the bacteria, again, things like strep throat and ear infections, that's what a bacteria germ causes, we can see it with a normal microscope, which is something a lot of schools have, a lot of labs, a lot of doctor's offices have. But with a virus, they're so small, you need this ginormous microscope called an electron microscope that needs a computer to run it so it can see things really, really small, which is what the virus is. And that's why we need to wear masks, social distance, do those other things to try and prevent from getting it because otherwise we could get sick. Wow, that was a great explanation. Our, our last question is one we've received from a number of viewers lately. Hello, my name is Ken Tojo and I live in Tokyo, Japan. My question is, when will COVID-19 end and how will we know? I like Matt the News Kids Edition. Bye! Hi, COVID has been bad and caused a lot of people to lose their loved ones. So I've been wondering, do scientists have a prediction of for when COVID will get better? If so, when? Bye. I love Nightly News Kids Edition. Great. It's a great question, Dr. John. And not only when will it end, but I like the part where he asks, how will we know it ends? You know, and that's the question of 2022, both when will it end and how will we know it's going to end? Now, one of the things about the virus, coronavirus, 
it's not going to go away itself. It's going to be with us for a very long time, probably for the rest of our lives. And we're going to have to protect ourselves against it, meaning getting the vaccine. And if outbreaks occur, getting those outbreaks under control. But as far as the pandemic and the things we're doing now to prevent us from getting sick, we're not going to have to do those much longer, I think. Maybe by summertime, we can start relaxing some of those masks and not being able to travel much, not being able to see our friends or go out and have fun because I think we're getting towards the end of the pandemic. Unfortunately, a lot of us, myself included, thought this was happening about six months ago and we had a new surge in cases. So we have to be very careful, keep an eye on things, do the things we know that can keep us, our family, our friends and our loved ones safe. And that's gonna get us through there sooner rather than later. And hopefully over the next few months, we'll have a better idea of when it's gonna end. And hopefully that's by summertime. Well, we'll keep covering until then. Dr. John Torres, thank you as always. You bet. Let's switch gears now and show you our pictures of the week. First, the Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium in Omaha, Nebraska, is showing off their new African elephant calves to the public. Say hello to these cuties, Eugenia and Sunny. Eugenia was born on January 7th. She's the first elephant born in the zoo's history. Sunny was born on January 30th. The zoo said the baby elephants are already trying to adapt to the environment. Meanwhile, this little girl is the newest addition to the Cape May County Zoo in New Jersey. Lilu, a 10-year-old common marmoset, came from the University of Pennsylvania School of Veterinary and Medicine. Also known as the cotton-eared marmoset, this monkey features include a white blaze on the forehead and white ear tufts. We wish her the best as she settles into her new home. All right, now to our inspiring kids series. We often ask kids like yourself what you want to be when you grow up. And there's definitely a lot of jobs and careers out there, some you may not even know about. And one boy from Tennessee came up with a unique way to tell you about some of them. You ready, Sam? Yeah. You can be an A. You can be an architect. Catch a building to kiss the sky. When six-year-old Sam recites his ABCs, there's a beat and a message about possibilities. Computer, software developer, programs, and systems, and files. They are an alphabetical roadmap of careers, dreams, and aspirations, A to Z. Sam, tell me what you like about this song. Because I can tell kids what they can be whatever they want to be when they grow up. You can be a J, you can be a judge, help people who seek justice. You can be a kid, kindergarten teacher. Those kids are young and restless. His father, Bobby, wrote the lyrics. We're rapping to, to, to remind little boys that look like Sam that they don't have to grow up to be rappers. We want children to understand that careers are not just about making money. You also want to actually enjoy what you do. I love to read. A young boy spelling out some of life's career it. paths but one letter at a time. You can be a kid, quite some physicist. So what do you want to be? When I grow up, I want to be an architect, the governor, and the president. I'm not going to let you leave me, Sam, without at least hearing some of your song. Are you willing to perform for me? Yeah. Let's right. do it. Let's go, buddy. Now to the X. Make, Make your own mark. Leave an impact on the world. With that Y. You can be your own boss. Those are born everywhere. And with that Z. Z. Zelly's the tribe. You can reach the sky if you try. If you try. Just so don't be a Z. Z. Just don't be a zombie. And let the world pass you by. We first brought you this story back in November 2020, and since then, a lot has happened in Sam White's life. Joining us now is Sam White and his dad, Bobby White. Really great to see you guys again. I'm glad you were well. Thank you. Great seeing you, Mr. Lester Holt. All right. Well, Sam, <laughs> let me ask you, if, for, first of all, take me back to 2020. How did the idea for the rap come about? I just wanted to um, help kids um, think about what they wanted to be when they grow up. So I came, so um, we came up with the rap. And, and, it's, and it really took off. It really struck a nerve. I think a lot of, a lot of kids like what you did. A lot of adults like what you did. And I think it opened up people's ideas about uh, what you could possibly do in life. Yeah, it was actually great, uh, Lester. Uh, it's been amazing to not just be known in our hometown, but to know that people have seen it in other places. It's been great. And we thank you guys. So, so what has changed? What, Bobby, I know you wrote the lyrics, right? What did you guys hope to accomplish? 
Well, the whole thing was just inspiring, just not Sam, but kids like Sam about all of the opportunities that are out there for them and that they can be whatever they want to be when they grow up. And so um, the, the lyrics that I, I should say co-wrote with Sam because he uh, pro provided some of those names as well. Um, it, it, that, it, it struck a chord just uh, to inspire kids and also to inspire adults about introducing careers to kids like Sam. Yeah, and a lot of people, as I said, both kids and grown-ups have watched the video that, that you made with your dad. Sam, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel happy because so many people have seen my video, so kids know what they want to be. <laughs> and I understand the ABC rap you and your dad put together inspired a book for kids. What can you tell me about that? So we wrote, so yeah, we wrote a rap and we wrote our book because um, we wanted more people to know they could be what they wanted to be when they grow up. And was there a demand? Were people asking you to do more about this? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer that one. Um, we heard from a whole lot of teachers. Like when the uh, rap went viral, uh, people were wanting to get the lyrics to it. And so it was just a blessing uh, to have been reached out to by Penguin Random House and for it to be turned into a book that now they have access to. So it's been great. And so to both of you, what is your message to kids who come up with an idea like this, who collaborate an idea like this? What's your message to kids, Sam? My message to kids is you can be whatever you want to be when you grow up because that's your decision. And Bobby, <laughs> I understand you and your family are also working on a new project in hopes of inspiring kids and, and once again, career choices. Yeah, Lester, it's near and dear to my heart. Um, Sam has educators on both sides of the family. My wife, Stephanie, his mom, um, and on uh, my family as well. And our idea is how can we now get that message out to kids in schools and in neighborhoods around the nation? So we have a couple of projects that are coming up and we're so thrilled and hopefully Lester, we can uh, be able to come back and share more about how we've been able to take that book and this idea and let them actually meet people in these various roles. I like you know, it's kind of like think career day and taking career day to another level. I like <laughs> the idea, but I'm not going to let you get out of here first because I've, I've got, got to ask Sam, like I did last time, can you sing a few lines for me? Well, listen, I, we have something even better. Yeah. Um, let's, you mentioned uh, that you said the A should be for anchor. I so we got a, a little something special for you, uh, if that's okay. All right, let's do it. You ready, Sam? A little louder so they can hear you. You can be an ex. You can be an anchor. Like your buddy, Mr. Lester Holt. So many millions of people who watch and listen every time you spoke. Wow, I love it. You're a little bit shy and you'd rather not to be seen. There's a whole lot of other careers in the news and you don't have to be on screen. Man, you've been working on that since November 2020? <laughs> We've been working on it since last night. Uh, oh, oh, that's, since last night, I am blown away. That's very impressive. And I'm thank you for putting anchor people on the map uh, in a great thank way. You. Guys, it's a real pleasure. What a great father-son duo you are. Uh, it's a real pleasure to have you on. Thanks so much. And, and let's stay in touch as you do more projects. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Okay. <laughs> Finally, let's turn now to one of my favorite topics, television shows, and specifically kids' shows, and some of the most popular ones ever made. Perhaps you've seen shows like Doc McStuffins and Vampirina, or maybe Ridley Jones and Ada Twist Scientist. Well, what you might not know is that behind all these shows is one person. Her name is Chris Nee, and she spoke with our kids correspondent Lucy about how she makes these popular shows come to life. In the world of kids TV, Chris Nee is a big deal. She worked on Sesame Street and Blue's Clothes. The doc is in. And in 2012, she created the hit show Doc McStuffins. The doc is in and she picks you up. Doc McStuffins is a little girl with a magic stethoscope who treats toys and stuffed animals. The show won a Peabody Award and was watched by millions of kids. I think we should check you into the clinic for the night. <gasps> Since you're an adult, how do you think of things that kids would want on TV? I'm really, really good at remembering what it felt like to be a, co a kid. We were normal vampires in Transylvania. She produced another hit for Disney called Vampirina. And now she has two shows on Netflix. One of them is Ada Twist Scientist. 
It is um, about a little girl who's a scientist and her two friends, and they're all really different kinds of scientists, but they face all of life's problems and figure things out by using science. I propose that the water disappeared in a scientific process called evaporation. <gasps> she works on that show with the Obamas. Yes, those Obamas. What's it like if you disagree with the former president and the first lady of the United States and oh. have to convince them that they're wrong? We did have something that we really disagreed on on one, um, on one of the shows that we worked with. I mean, it's really hard to get up your energy um, and the courage to sort of disagree. For the most part, we were really lucky because we were on the same page on everything. How hard was it to get Ada Twist's hair right? And why is it so important? We knew it was really important for, for little Black girls to get to see themselves reflected in a realistic way. And we really wanted to make sure that Ada's hair was something that could be celebrated by all the little Black girls who were watching the show. All I can think about is going on adventures, traipsing through jungles, rushing through temples, eating bugs. <gasps> Her other Netflix show is Ridley Jones. It's about a girl who lives in a museum where the exhibits come to life at night. I was born ready. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. Pretty much all of your shows feature girls just being awesome. When little girls watch your shows, what do you want them to take away from it? First of all, that's the best compliment. One of my most important things is that I want to see girls as the leader of the pack, that they're not just like the leader of the girls group or they're to the side of the lead character. I want to see like heroes journeys for girls because you can lead. I know you think I look good, but I don't feel good. One of the most interesting characters in Red Lay Jones is Fred. Not a boy, not a girl, just Fred. I feel like... Me. Do you have a character that is a bison who is referred to as non-binary? Why did you include this character in your show? I thought it was important to include in the show because it's what's happening in real life for kids across this country. And it's not only for the kids who are going through that journey, but it's for the kids who are around someone who's going through that journey. My brother and sister had questions too. First up, Zoe. How do you make cartoons? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it takes a really long time. With animation, somebody has to design each of the characters, and then somebody has to storyboard each of the characters, and then somebody has to animate all the characters. It takes us almost a year to make every episode of animation. And so now my little brother has a question to ask you. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Hi, Aiden. Hi. You want her out of the camera? I like it. <laughs> what did you like when you were a kid? What did I like? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I really, really, really liked my stuffed animals. Especially, I had one Snoopy stuffed animal that I thought talked to me. Wait. Which might tell you where the story for Doc McStuffins came from. Oh, when you were, when you were a kid, I was a baby. <laughs> I think that's... <laughs> I think that's probably right. But I did like, you know what I did like? I liked Sesame Street. Here's something funny. Chris makes cartoons, but she can't draw. Don't tell anyone, but I can't draw at all. I collaborate with all kinds of amazing artists who kind of take the things that I'm thinking about and put them down on paper. And they also bring all kinds of new ideas and cool things, but um, I can't even draw like a stick figure cat. If kids watching this want to grow up to make television shows like you do, what advice do you have for them? Well, the first advice I'm gonna give you, your parents might not love, which is watch a lot of TV. No, look, I think the best thing is when you um, know yourself really well, when you've lived a life that you can come in and tell a story that's unique and, and special. Um, and really it's about like getting a really great general education and learning to be someone who's passionate about things. Passion and watching TV. That's advice I can live by. For Nightly News Kids Edition, I'm Lucy. That was awesome.
Lucy, thanks so much. Always fun having you on the show. Well, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at NBCUni.com, and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. And just a program note, you can catch a brand new episode of Nightly News Kids Edition this Saturday on NBC. Check your local listing for the time in your area. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.